Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're having a great day and that you are all doing well to start things off. Arthur Hayes, the co-founder and CEO of Seychelles-based BitMEX, the Bitcoin Mercantile Exchange, has a bullish prediction for the Bitcoin price, which he believes will skyrocket to $50,000 by year end of 2018, he told CNBC. While the Bitcoin price has bounced back and is inching closer to $8,800, it's still a far cry from Hayes' price prediction, though as Fundstrat market strategists have pointed out, much of the gains in the Bitcoin price tend to unfold over just a handful of days each year, which is kind of true. We usually see a uh, certain period where for some reason, like a week and a half, no one knows what's going on and the price continues to completely skyrocket unbeknownst to the rest of the world why it's actually happening. During the rest of his talk, he also addressed the cultural differences that affect cryptocurrency market dynamics in the Western world and Asia, the latter of which is where some suggest two thirds of the market originates from. He said, I think Asia dominates crypto because they're very used to trading digital assets, said Hayes pointing to South Korea, where locals are accustomed to trading virtual goods in video games and where the culture is easily transferred to cryptocurrency trading and it's individuals, not institutions, that are driving most of the volume. I think a lot of us were pretty surprised last year when South Korea and Japan kind of took over the entire market, and it's kind of, how do I say this? I wish that North America and Europe would kind of um, step up as well when it comes to investing, but the general sentiment when you ask many people, especially during interviews or videos in general online, of people who are living in North America and or Europe, about investing in cryptocurrencies, a lot of them are still afraid of it, and a lot of people still uh, prefer to invest in the stock market. Even when they were asking people, they said, you know, are you fine getting 5% gains from the stock market per year? And people were uh, pretty happy getting that amount, so it's kind of crazy. Uh, this is not the first odd price prediction that we have heard, at least not this month or even this year, but they're all kind of floating around the $50,000 mark. Uh, I'll get more into the news and why I think this could also be a possibility, but we've been hearing from all these higher ups that this is definitely what the price is going to be. So I always assume they know something that we do not. Continuing on, the banking unit of Japan's Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group, the MUFG, plans to trial its own cryptocurrency as early as 2019. Cointelegraph Japan quotes local news media outlet NHK saying that a test phase of the cryptocurrency known as MUFG coin, I don't know if I should call them MUFG coin, MUF, MUFG, I'll just say MUFG because I don't want to mispronounce it, MUFG coin could involve around 100,000 account holders. Currently the fifth largest bank in the world by assets, MUFG originally signaled its intentions to launch a token in January this year, and so doing became the first Japanese bank to issue one. Plans for the move stretch back further to 2016. MUFG coin is designed to offer currency functionality first and foremost with test customers to download an app that would automatically convert their deposits according to NHK's report. One MUFG will be equal to the value of one yen. According to NHK, Users will be able to use the currency to make payments at places like restaurants, convenience stores, and other shops, as well as transfer the currency to the accounts of other participants. So, we heard a couple of weeks ago there were... Okay, first of all, we've heard news out of Japan that a lot of their regulators had said that if any bank or if multiple banks around the world had started to release their own cryptocurrencies... It would be the end of normal finance as we know it because it could lead to another economic crash as all of the uh, coins may not be able to work with each other. And even then, we had news that we wouldn't possibly see the first uh, bank slash central bank issued cryptocurrency until around maybe 2025, maybe 2030. I keep saying this, the market is accelerating so fast. I'm, this, you know, this may not be part of our market, whatever currency they create. Uh, but it's think about how fast adoption is moving now. It's it's all kind of it's a little scary how how quickly things are going, especially when we have predictions that things won't happen until 2030. And then they're happening in like seven or eight months. It's it's all kind of weird, especially for a bank to just kind of jump onto it like that. Next up, 
the security uh, discussion is once again in the news. The Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, and other federal agencies should swiftly decide if Ether should be treated as a security or a commodity, a financial regulator said at the Consensus Cryptocurrency Conference on Monday. Brian Quintez, a commissioner at the Commodities Future Trading Commission, the CFTC, said officials at the agency have been meeting with the SEC about whether Ether falls under the SEC as a security or under the CFTC as a commodity. There are a lot of big issues to sort out, Quintez told reporters at Consensus after his speech. We're sorting them out, but I don't have a timeline. I would say days. I wouldn't say days, but I wouldn't say months. So we are being swung around because... Uh, we were told before by some people at the SEC and the CFTC that if we did receive news, we would have a timeline between nine months and 48 months to get proper clarification on this. Um, but also, I also recently spoke about that apparently there are a lot of lawyers uh, who are, uh, how do I say this, who they're not from Ethereum. They're from companies who have an interest in Ethereum. I'll put it that way. And they have been going to the CFTC and all these other places and the SEC having meetings with them, as they said right here, because they're trying to make sure that Ethereum is not labeled as a security because there's a lot of big money in this. My projection, my prediction is still and is still going to stand this exact same way. If Ethereum is labeled a security, I think the price will dip because a lot of people don't understand that this signifies that it is then, uh, what's the word, uh, regulated and in some sort of way. If the if Ethereum is not labeled a security or it's labeled a commodity or whatever they decide to throw it under, if it's not a security, the price of Ethereum is going to absolutely explode. And this is when I think the flipping would happen. Uh, so... As of now, as it states, he says, I wouldn't say days, but I wouldn't say months. I don't know if we're going to get any type of news within 2018. I would like some clarification very soon, just because I think this could be the catalyst to kind of get the entire market moving because everyone is just waiting for these two organizations to say what they are thinking. Next up, London Block Exchange, or the LXB, has recently hit the crypto news for being the only exchange in London to provide GBP or Great British Pound trading pairs. In an attempt to add new and diverse coins, the exchange has added Omize Go. Uh, two days ago, the company announced that it had listed Omize Go to the token list for trading. LXB is the only exchange platform in the United Kingdom to offer Omize Go GBP pairs along with Omize Go BTC and Omize Go Ethereum. Omize Go is an ERC20 token which works on the Ethereum network. The token is owned by Omise, an Asian company that specializes in payment services. If you do not know what Omise Go is, I implore you to please Google it, to please uh, find some type of YouTube video about it is going to be one of the major projects this year. They're working very closely with the people behind Ethereum and they are, I think the entire project is absolutely awesome. We don't hear much from Omise Go because they have stated before. They do not believe in giving uh, constant news updates because they don't want to fluctuate the price of the coin. Uh, you know, with a little bit of hype. So they say when they give news, they give news. And as of now, it is projected that Omize Go should possibly launch sometime in 2018. So here we go. Coinbase is in the news. This is going to be a, um, a doozy because they, uh, this just goes back to my prediction. Something is happening behind this door or in this meeting right here. Some Something is happening somewhere and these people know exactly what's going on uh, because everything that's being released, all the news that we have now is just about institutional investors. And I'll go through exactly what Coinbase has planned for very, very rich people. Earlier today, San Francisco-based digital currency exchange, Coinbase announced four major products gearing entirely towards facilitating and encouraging institutional investment, signaling that the herd is indeed on its way. First and foremost, Coinbase has partnered with an SEC-related broker dealer to and to create Coinbase Custody, which the company claims is the most secure cryptocurrency storage solution on the market today. The company explained Coinbase Custody is proud to offer a service that couples Coinbase's cryptocurrency security 
excellence with third-party auditing and financial reporting validation that operates at the high standards of an SEC regulated custodial broker deal. We had news about two weeks ago that Coinbase. Uh, so the reason they Coinbase has stated why they have not added new coins is because they do not know if a coin will be labeled as a security. And as such, if they added the coins that they had already planned on adding and the SEC came forward and said, that's a security, you are not legally allowed to sell and or trade securities, they would have to take the coins down. So it seems they've partnered with an SEC regulated broker. Uh, they're well on their way to be able to handle security coins should any of them be security coins. This is one of the main reasons why they said or have noted that they're going to add ERC-20 tokens, but they have not stated which ones they are going to add. The same exact thing with Ripple, they said, or the theory goes, they have not added them not because they don't like Ripple. They understand that there's money to be ra made, raid, <laughs> to be made from the coin, but should Ripple be announced as a security, they're going to be like, okay, we have to take this down, which is not good business for them. In its push to become the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Coinbase has announced a new electronic marketplace known as Coinbase Markets. Coinbase Markets provides a centralized pool of liquidity for all Coinbase products. Over the course of the year, Coinbase Markets will introduce new features like low latency performance, on-premise data center co colocation services, institutional connectivity and access, and settlement and clearing services. These additions will allow for a more effective price discovery process to occur, creating tighter markets, deeper liquidity, and increased certainty of execution. Additionally, the San Francisco-based company is opening a new office in Chicago, which will greatly expand the company's presence across the United States. The entire thing of... Uh, increased liquidity and um just creating a larger place for the markets the uh, what, what's the word the prediction that we've had so far for this year that the market will eventually be over worth over one trillion dollars sometime this year you know give a little take a little depending on where you want to land on the trillion dollar mark exactly how much we do not know but if it's expected that we're going to see a five to tenfold in price increase of a lot of coins this is why all these major companies are uh, seemingly setting up for um, all the rich money to kind of flow into the market. And this is why they're offering all of these services. Coinbase has also announced its plan to launch Coinbase Prime, a new platform built specifically to provide tools and services to institutional investors looking to trade cryptocurrency. This product will fill a piece, a missing piece of critical infrastructure needed for institutions. Over the course of the year, we intend to offer lending and margin financing products to qualified investments, to clients, whatever. <laughs> High touch and low touch execution services like over the counter trading and algorithm orders and new market data and research products. We will also introduce platform improvements like multi-user permissions and whitelisted withdrawal addresses. Uh, right. Finally, Coinbase has announced the Coinbase Institutional Coverage Group, which is focused entirely on servicing the needs of institutional clients by providing sales, sales trading, research, market operations, and client services support. I still think, I mean, I would like for Coinbase to add more coins, not even just the ones that I love, just to kind of get on with it. But it seems that they're gearing up instead for uh, the major money to enter the market. While a lot of other exchanges you may have noticed are just adding new coins. Um, I'm pretty sure between Coinbase and Gemini, they are trying to make sure that they corner the market. And they're specifically, um, I, I, I almost said something that I probably shouldn't say on YouTube. They're finding a way to uh, help institutional investors get their money into the market and... Uh, I mean, there's no other way to really do this except for completely uh, helping them out in this way. I really almost said a lot of bad things. I need to watch my language on here. Okay. Last up. A top U.S. policy maker made mostly positive remarks about Bitcoin. Also not ruling out its <laughs> ruling it out as a potential threat to the U.S. dollar, he said in an interview on CNBC. Speaking to CNBC on the sidelines of the Consensus 2018 conference in New York. 
St. Louis Louis Fed President James Bullard also identified positive aspects of cryptocurrency, namely revolving around cutting costs in trade. He stated that crypto is facilitating trade that would not otherwise occur. Some of it's illegal, but some of that is avoiding costs that would otherwise be there. Asked whether Bitcoin was a threat to the U.S. dollar, Bullard voiced uncertainty about the potential competition the leading cryptocurrency could pose, saying, I don't think so at this point. We don't know what the future is going to unfold. Uh, if there's any indication between or like a difference between uh, people in the government and crypto enthusiasts, especially when you come to John McAfee and what's the other guy's name? Tim, Tim Ford, Tim Michaels. I can remember him in the other video as well. There are a lot of people who believe that within the next two years that Bitcoin specifically will have taken over the U.S. dollar. Whether that's going to happen is still left to be seen. Uh, I think it would be kind of cool, personally, me, to see something that is so uh, new to kind of take over the U.S. dollar or any uh, fiat currency that we have out there. But let's see if that is actually going to happen. But there's a lot of talk uh, between regulators right now as to what they think or feel should be happening to cryptocurrencies. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for this video. There's still a lot more news. I'd, I'm trying to not uh, pack it all into one video. There's a lot of uh, announcements that have come forward. Like a lot of this stuff that I'm talking about has come from the consensus event. Um, oddly enough, none of it has been like... Uh, things that we were kind of expecting. Like normally a consensus, you get news about new upgrades, new partnerships, new things that are happening. A lot of it has just been focusing around regulation. I guess that's where we kind of are this year. Hope you guys all have a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you may be watching this, wherever you are around the world. Hope you are enjoying it. Thank you once again for watching. And as usual, I will talk to you all soon. See you.